Hello, hello everyone, I am Cued. I am a mobile visual sound maker currently developing an original project and aspiring to get it made one day. And the project is something I've talked a little bit about on the channel. A few months ago, I made a video on mobile rotoscope animation and figuring out a workflow for that on the iPad. And it was a creative technique I wanted to try out to see if it would help you know, accelerate the process of developing any scene in animation on mobile. And animation is a medium that I'm really drawn to just because I think it's so expressive and I think like there's so much you can do. It's something I really love and I am super interested in seeing how that can be used in this project to push it forward. When I'm developing this project, I'm kind of thinking about it in one or two aspects. The first side of it is just story. So all the narrative planning and then everything that comes with that, like story art, you know, character designs, concept art, and a bunch of other visual development stuff. But then on the other side, I really want to figure out the technique. How exactly am I doing this? Am I doing 2D animation? Am I doing 3D animation? Whichever one that I pick, how can I do that on mobile? So 2D animation is something that uh, there are more and more mobile apps coming forward that allow for this, and it's something that I'm trying. The main reason I want to figure out how to do it on the iPad and on mobile as a whole is just because if I can do this here, it means that I'll have, you know, increased portability. But also, if I can accomplish this, if I can actually do this, it means that other people can too. And it can help bridge the gap for some people who want to try this stuff but don't have access to the gear. And that's something that, like I've talked about before on this channel as well, that's incredibly important to me. If I can help other people along the way figure out how to do this stuff uh, that that's really fulfilling to me and it's a it's a mission of mine so i'm trying to do that but i have to be able to just do it on my own in the first place so <laughs> we'll see today i'm going to be showing my process for creating a rough animation of a scene i storyboarded earlier this year and i'm going to be talking about two different apps that i use for this process and the first i will be talking about is art studio pro for drawing the keyframes and then calipeg a relatively new app for creating the rough animation. So I'm just gonna be walking through those apps and what worked for me and what didn't and what I learned along the way. So my first step was to illustrate my keyframes and keyframes for those who don't know are essentially all of the main key poses of an animated scene. The keyframes essentially guide you in your process of trying to figure out where the animation is going. So if I'm moving around, I'm going to illustrate maybe four to five key poses of all of the major movements. And then I'm going to create in-betweens, which are frames that go in between each key pose to help make the animation. The scene that I was doing was a scene of my character Zaria moving her paintbrush kind of along the way. So I went outside and I filmed a reference video of me kind of mimicking that action and then I broke down each key frame of the video that I had that I wanted to illustrate and I brought that all into Art Studio Pro and then I did my best to copy each frame that I had in an illustration so I could get all of those key frames together kind of one by one. The main thing was to see how I could mimic the pose while also matching the character design I had for Zaria. So it wasn't just as simple as just directly copying the thing, but I used the reference images of me from the video as inspiration and a guide for how to illustrate that you know, in the most accurate and natural way possible. The reason why I used Art Studio Pro is just because it's really easy for me to use it. I use it as my main tool for digital art and illustration, so I don't have to really learn anything. I think Procreate could be just as great of a tool for this process, but I'm very new to Procreate. I just got it, so it was not going to be something that I was going to be able to use very quickly for this. So, you know, speed was everything, and I was able to do this fairly quickly. Once I was finished with illustrating the keyframes, I took all the keyframes and I timed them in a video and used that to create an animatic, which is like a rough animation, like a very, very bare bones rough animation, usually used in the storyboarding process before you start actually animating. Once I had the animatic, I brought it into Calipeg. Like I said, pretty newly released animation program, which boasts to essentially offer all of the main primary tools animators would need. Your timeline, and you have your different transform tools, and all these different brushes, and all these different tools that are essential for the animation process. So one of the features that Calipeg has is it allows you to import a video onto one of your layers. So I imported the animatic, and then I could draw on top of it. So the animatic was guiding me in the process of knowing where the poses were, and then I knew what I had to do when I was drawing. And I'm very new to this process of animation anyway, but that being said, Calpeg is pretty, it's pretty straightforward, although it's a little complicated in some ways, but I think that bodes well for the program because it means that you can 
probably if you know how to use some of those more advanced, more complicated features, you're probably going to be able to create more complex animations. This isn't a really basic tool. This isn't a really limited tool. I think that there's a lot that you can do with it. And that's great in comparison to maybe some of the other animation apps that are out. I think Calipeg has a unique edge there. When you open Calipeg, like I mentioned, you have all your basic tools and I just went to town. I just started drawing frame to frame, frame to frame. I worked in 12 frames per second just because 24 frames per second is is a lot. That's a lot of frames you're drawing, a lot of pictures you're drawing, you know, and it's not going to make up for as much time. So 12 frames per second is pretty common in hand-drawn animation, and that's what I chose to work with. The onion skin tool was like my best friend during the whole process. And onion skinning is a technique that allows you to show previous frames or frames that take place ahead of the one you're working on. And you can use different colors to highlight that just as another tool to help guide the animator in figuring out how to do it and maintaining consistency with the line work. And something that I was struggling with was when I was animating frame to frame, sometimes like the, the line art would just be so inconsistent. Like it'd be super wobbly and things didn't look right. So something that I really had to make sure that I was doing was I had to use the onion skin tool to keep things consistent. I used it to make sure that I was accurate in my drawing and making sure that I maintained, you know, the right, let's say, width of a character's arm or making sure the legs didn't wobble strangely. A technique that I tried that helped me maintain consistency and accuracy you know, from frame to frame was focusing and honing in on a specific area of the animation and animating that, you know, in a stretch a stretch of, of animating versus uh, trying to draw the entire figure each single image all at once uh, when i was doing that i found that i struggled to maintain consistency and then that's when the frames looked really strange whereas when i was honing on say her hand it was much easier for me to maintain consistency in doing that so that was something that i will probably do more of when i do more animations when i'm presented with like a giant task all at once it can be extremely overwhelming for me and i can get really defeated really really fast so i have to sort of break it down into small pieces that way i don't lose focus and i can actually get it finished this this animation also was not extremely complex on the surface. This is a really simple animation of simple movement, but I found that more subtle, nuanced movements are like way more challenging than just like really fast walk cycles or really fast motions like it's it's so much harder to have that nuanced flow because that subtle character acting if you if you get it wrong it like looks weird and it just becomes just it just becomes a mess it's just like it's so challenging for someone like me who's very new to this Overall, Calipeg was pretty solid, but it did give me some issues with exporting before I was able to even update. And when I updated, it didn't completely fix the issue. Also, Calipeg is missing the ability to let you import your own brushes. So I'm pretty much stuck with whatever the app has to offer. And I would like to use my own brushes. So I definitely don't see myself using Calipeg for final passes of animation or the final rendering stages, but for the rough animation process, and just nailing the movement, it's really quick for me to just end up with an idea like that, and I don't have to think about it too much, and I'm learning it a bit more. I've had it for about maybe, what, a month now? A, a month and a half? Uh, and also, when it came to this animation, I was not working on it as consistently as I should have been. I definitely was just kind of doing it at random, random times. That's not recommended, I think. You should probably set you know, increments of time that you're dedicating to focusing on this thing that you're, you know, if, if it's a project that you're trying to get done within a reasonable amount of time. It's it's how I work. Sometimes I work really late at night. Sometimes I feel like working during the day. That, that's been happening lately. It's weird. I'm, I'm not used to that. I'm more of a night owl, but, uh, you know, I'm just whatever can work. I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying a bunch of different things. But all in all, it's a pretty solid program. It's a pretty solid uh, pipeline and bouncing from these two apps probably seems like more work than it actually is because on the computer you can just do everything in one app but, but because of that it means that they have to really the app ends up being really hard to learn and then on top of that it might not be easy to optimize that app whereas i can go into art studio pro know what i need to get done there then go into calipeg and know exactly what i need to do there and then bounce into whatever next app that i'm going to be using and it allows me to focus a lot better because i know what my goal is within that particular that particular app and the parameters are clearly defined for me once there are more apps that can take advantage of that type of workflow i think you're really talking about some 
some exciting possibilities there creatively. My next step now is to render the animation, colors and lighting and details, and also create the composite for the background and everything and just start to actually assemble this so it can be a complete thing and it's crazy how much work goes into like a, a simple like like five six second animation or even shorter it, it takes so much work and i definitely it, it's hard for me to do this all by myself i definitely don't plan on that i don't i don't plan on it staying that way because yikes that's just really hard it's it's just terrible i'm learning a lot and i plan on learning procreate more for the process of rendering the colors because procreate comes with a built-in animation timeline in the app anyway so i'm going to be comparing procreate versus art studio pro just to see speed which one's faster for that rendering process and then once i can figure that out I am going to have to refine the pipeline more, keep practicing, and then eventually maybe I can do something <laughs> that doesn't take too long and that can be like actually really cool, hopefully, hopefully. Not necessarily to be like a one a one person animation studio. It's just to see how I can develop my ideas. And right now, all I've got is really me, so I have to do whatever I can to learn. I think I'm becoming more of a generalist. I've been over the last few years learning so many different things in so many different areas. Sometimes I get really discouraged because I'm like, what am I even doing? Like, how is this going to coalesce into anything meaningful? But what I'm realizing now is if I can have an understanding of the process and every single aspect, as many aspects as possible, then hopefully I could be an effective leader and help guide people in the process of executing various ideas. If there are someone else's ideas or even my own. If I don't know how these, these different aspects of the process work, then I'm gonna be probably really, I'm probably not going to be helpful in, in trying to guide anyone into executing anything creatively. I'm trying to just learn as much as I can, and it's a hard process, but I am encouraged. I'm just encouraged to keep going for it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm inspired uh, just because uh, this idea isn't going away. I've had this idea for years, and it seems like every day I want to do it more, uh, which is rare for me. I am a very fickle person. I'll want to do something, and then I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm very energized creatively about this, and I am looking forward to the day that it can happen. So I'm just going to keep kind of chipping away at it and sharing whatever I learn with y'all, right? That's, that's the idea. I'm really excited to try this because I think animation as a medium, I feel like has been viewed in a very monolithic way. You know, it's been boxed in and there are so many traditional uh, viewpoints on it and perspectives that I think have really held it back in so many ways. I look at how much great animation there is, and then I compare that to just the amount of stories we've had in film and live action film as a whole, and it just means that like all of the great animation we've had is just it's just scratched the surface of what else is possible and what else is out there. And I feel like that might even be a missing variable for so many people who maybe are wanting to, uh, you know tell stories and maybe don't know what the right frame uh, or right f field of view uh, would be, I guess, fitting for it. I think animation is going to provide such an interesting perspective and lens for these stories. On top of that, I secretly believe that there are a lot of people that want to get into animation. Like my theory is like, maybe I'm just projecting, maybe it's just me, but I think a lot of people are learning even more digital art stuff to break into animation. And I think that as more tools show up and as, as it becomes more possible for even more people to do it, you're just going to be seeing a completely different and like almost unprecedented explosion of creativity. So uh, I'm, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I'm, I, I just, I want to be a part of it in some way. So I'm going to keep sharing what I learn and I'm going to keep experimenting. And I am curious to see how this all plays out. A big thank you to everyone who has been watching and commenting and liking and supporting me on on here and like watching any of my videos i really appreciate it it's, it's a surprise like whenever i see it um just because sometimes i just feel like i'm the only person who's even interested in any of this stuff not in like a oh i'm the only one out there that likes it but sometimes i just feel like i don't even know if anyone's gonna care about this or like is gonna be interested in seeing this and i just kind of put this out into the void and hope someone responds so i really really appreciate all the support and I have a lot of videos that I want to make, like a lot of tutorial stuff that I want to do. 
and whatnot. So if there's anything that you're wanting to see, anything that you're interested in seeing, please let me know. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. I appreciate all the likes, the subscribes, the the, the, the comments and everything. Uh, it really means a lot and I it energizes me to keep going and keep sharing. So I'm looking forward to finally getting back to uploading more videos this year. Just, oh my gosh, y'all y'all know the year has just... The year has been has been something. But that being said, I hope you all continue to be creative and inspired and are I hope you all are energized to uh, go after any of your creative creative ambitions uh, as we enter the the final portion of the year. I want to see everyone go for it as much as possible. But anyway, that about does it for this video. So, thanks so much for watching y'all and I will catch y'all later.